Hey, good morning and welcome to our digital worship experience this Sunday morning, this third Sunday in this season of Easter where we continue the joyous celebration of Christ's resurrection from the dead. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. I'm Pastor Mark and Pastor Jeremy will be preaching later in the service. Uh, we're on behalf of both of us, we're just so grateful that you're joining us today, and we just pray not only uh, will you be blessed by God's Word uh, as we sing and hear the Scriptures and hear it proclaimed in the, in the message, but also I pray that you will participate, uh, as is the tradition of the ancient church, uh, that, uh, that when we gather for worship, that there is this uh, back and forth, that uh, God speaks to us, and then we all respond back to God together. It's what we call liturgy, which means the work of the people. So we do have a liturgical service. There's an order to our service, and it's very participatory. It's not just a spectator sport. So please, uh, through the prayers, through the songs, I would just ask you to worship where you are right now uh, for the next 45 minutes. A quick announcement, uh, something very exciting. Uh, Pastor and Jeremy and I will be starting a Bible study, also virtual, of course, this week on the book of Acts. So uh, look for that information to come out as to when you can tune into that and how you can even participate in that Bible study. With that, I pray God's blessings on our worship this beautiful third Sunday of Easter, and we will begin singing together our first song.
Wow, that was fantastic. I heard many of you singing at home for that first song, Keep It Up. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Uh, we begin our worship in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now we enter into a time of confessing our sins to God and receiving that sweet word of forgiveness from Jesus himself. Let us confess our sins to God and to one another, acknowledging that we have not always displayed the unity we share in Jesus. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we ask you to forgive us for our many sins of thought, word, and deed. We humbly admit that we are responsible for sin that has divided and fractured relationships with others. We have not always walked the extra mile or turned the other cheek. We are truly sorry for our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus, crucified and risen, we seek your pardon and your forgiveness. Amen. Upon this, your confession, I announce the grace of God to each and every one of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The epistle reading is from the book of 1 Peter, the first chapter. And if you call on him as Father who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for the sake of you, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart. Since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers, and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And this word is the good news that was preached to you. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the sixth chapter. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. The eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. This is the gospel of the Lord. Another special greeting for our guests who are joining us all over the country and indeed uh, all over the world. I've gotten one email from a man in Malaysia joining us. So uh, what a joy it is to have all nations and peoples together uh, in God's house. So thank you for joining us. If you would like to reach out to us, Pastor Jeremy and myself, we are people people, I guess you could say. We, we thrive on making the connection with each and every one of you. If you can send us an email or a text message, you can uh, send it to text at dflc.org. If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, you can click the like or the thumbs up button so we can see uh, that you've joined us. Or if you're on the church website uh, watching this, there's just a short contact form right underneath the video screen, the box there. Uh, just kind of name and e email. And if you have a comment, a prayer request especially, we would really love to hear from you. At this time, we'll have some special music before we normally collect the, the offering in person. 
uh, you do have the opportunity to give online uh, through our website, dflc.org slash give, or you can mail uh, a check to the church with the address shown above. I pray God's blessings as you return to the Lord, a small portion of all that he's given to you in recognition and thanksgiving to God, the, the giver of all good things. After the special music, we'll continue our worship. We join together in confessing our faith with the Apostles' Creed. One, two,
I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Again, I invite you to join together as we lift our prayers up to our great and gracious God. I will conclude each of my prayers with, Lord, in your mercy, so that you can know to respond with, hear our prayer. Let's pray. Lord, for those whose lives have been turned upside down by disease, calamity, or tragedy, Lord, that you would bring healing, restoration, and a peace grounded in faith in Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the leaders around the world, that they may see you and not themselves as the source of wisdom for their decision-making. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who lack faith in Jesus, that the Holy Spirit may use us in some way to turn their hearts to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are struggling with issues related to aging, that you would comfort their fears and alleviate them of their concerns. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Accept, O Lord, this gifts of praise and thanksgiving we bring for all your goodness and generosity. And with our song of praise, accept our tithes and offerings that your church may have the resources to proclaim your gospel and care for the poor and those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those times when we are tempted to stray from your word and turn to the world's answers, forgive us for our lack of faith and show us your powerful influence in our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now I invite you to join our special guest this morning, our family who's going to lead us in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Bye, we miss you. Bye. Bye. Miss you. Well, good morning, and again, thank you for joining us for our uh, service today. Uh, My name is Pastor Jeremy DePina, and we have time to be able to come and look at God's Word today in the second week of our series, One Month to Live, a pretty self-explanatory series. If you truly only had one month to live, what are the things that you would do? What would be most important in your life? Uh, Just as a little reminder, we're going to look over our theme verse for this series. It comes from the book of Psalms, chapter 39, verse 4. Uh, We hear, Lord, remind me how brief my time on earth will be. Remind me that my days are numbered, how fleeting my life is. This is a prayer that David uh, pushes up to our Lord, and how interesting it is. God, uh, show me the exact time that I am going to die. Lord, show me the time that I have left on this earth. Well, those aren't exactly the words that David is sharing with the Lord. Instead, he is asking him, you know, Lord, show me how precious my days are. 
Show me how fleeting this time here on earth really is, that I will understand the importance of my life, this gift that you have given to me. You know, there was a movie that came out in 2007 that was called The Bucket List. It was a movie starring Morgan Freeman and Jack Nicholson, two individuals who discovered that they are terminally ill. And so they decide that they're going to do everything that they have always wanted to do. They create this list that uh, they want to perform all these acts before they kick the bucket. And as they go through this series of events, this bucket list, we see them uh, drive a Shelby Mustang, they go skydiving, they eat dinner in France, you name it. Anything that they have ever wanted to do, they do. And little by little, they go through and they cross off these items. And so as we begin today, I want you to maybe just take a quick little mental list, maybe even jot down for yourself, what are some items you would have on your bucket list if you only had one month left to live? What are the things that you would do? As we think about that this morning, let's jump into our main text as we look at this word that we hear from today. The Lord tells us, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So if you look at the original Greek there and look at that word treasure, uh, it's something that is best described as being a deposit or an investment that is being made. And so when we hear these words from our Lord today, think about it in that, that manner. Where are we storing up? Where are we making deposits? Where are we investing the things that we have in this life? The gifts that God has given to us, our time, our talents, our treasure, our, our testimony of the gospel, what are we doing with those things? Are we building up storehouses for ourselves here on this earth in a selfish manner, or are we looking forward to what God has given to us of building up and investing in something that is even, even greater than that? And that can be difficult for us at times, but the best part of God's calling in his word is every time he gives us a command, if you will, or he gives us a calling, he also gives us uh, the instruction manual to be able to go along with that. How do I do this? And the Lord simply puts it this way. But seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. We have uh, a propensity to be able to worry in this life. We worry about a lot of different things, and there's a, probably a lot of people that are out there right now worrying today. But even with those worries, God calls us to be able to, again, address them through this remedy, to put his kingdom first, and through this manner, all those things that we worry about will be taken care of as well. How do I do that? How do I put the kingdom of God first? What does that look like here on this earth? Today we're just going to look at uh, three simple ways that we can, in the here and in the now, follow this command of our Savior. So here's the first one. I will guard against materialism. I will guard against materialism. Uh, this has got to be one of the most difficult ones because everything around us in our world tells you you need to have the biggest, you need to have the best, you need to have the latest, you need to have the greatest. You need to be able to collect all these things because in doing so, you will feel better. In doing so, you will receive happiness. But be careful, God tells us. This is the way of the world. This isn't how we seek the kingdom of God. Jesus puts it this way, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. All of us have been there before. Uh, I need to have more. I need to have this. I need to have that. Uh, that coat or that dress or that suit or that shirt that you had to have, you name it. And the abundance of possessions that we collect, no matter how much we receive, never seems to amount to any type of eternal joy or eternal happiness. Be careful 
God says. Instead, what can we do with that? But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then you will get what you have prepared for yourself. This is how it will be with anyone who stores up things for himself, but is not rich toward God. Now notice when Jesus is giving this piece of imagery, he's talking about this individual who has everything. In fact, he has so much, he needs to create more room to store all of his things. He's investing in everything here on this earth, yet in this moment, his life is taken from him. He hasn't planned on that which is yet to come, about this great life that God has prepared for us. He's only preparing in a selfish manner that which we have on this earth. He's being greedy. He's focused on the material. And all of us have done this. All of us will continue to do this. Those shiny little things, shiny big things, that we're attracted to over and over and over again, that we just just have to have, because we think that at some point, when we just reach this one goal of making the right salary, of having enough in our savings, of being able to have the the house that we desire, you name it, uh, then somehow we're going to receive this eternal happiness, as I mentioned. But it doesn't happen. Don't be this fool. Build up what is rich toward God. You see, once we, we push aside the material things of this world, we can move on to a whole different life. We can do something that's, that's different, that truly helps in seeking the kingdom of God first. That's point number two that we have today. Uh, I will be generous. Push aside the material things, and now I commit to being generous. Uh, this is hard for us to be able to do, because once we stop focusing on those, those things, uh, it tends to always claw back. Every advertisement you see on the TV, on the billboard, it's all about you need this, you want this, you have to have this. Because again, this will create fulfillment in your life. But how are we generous with the things that God has given us now? Of Not wanting more, but taking the things that we have, again, our time, our talents, our treasure, our testimony, and sharing that with others. Well, we do so in a generous manner. One of the texts I love so much is in the book of Matthew when Jesus gives us these words. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. There's a story of a man named Vance who uh, is an older uh, white gentleman. He lives in an apartment complex that's mainly filled with uh, Hispanic and African-American individuals. And he's known not only for being one of the only white individuals or Anglos that lives there, he's known for helping out a lot of the young men in his apartment complex. Uh, One night, he's sitting at his house, and sure enough, comes this knock on the door. He goes to his door, and there's a young man standing there. A young man who asks him if he can help him tie his tie for a job interview that he has tomorrow. Uh, Vance agrees and he helps him tie his tie and then the young man looks down at his shoes. Uh, They're torn, they're, they're ripped, they're dirty and he asks Vance, do you have a pair of shoes I can borrow? Vance knows that he has a pair of shoes in his closet. In fact, he he just bought them about a week ago. He hasn't worn them even one time yet at this point. And during this moment, he walks back to his closet, and he's thinking to himself, man, I I really hope these shoes do not fit this boy's feet. He's just a 16-year-old. Can he wear a size 13 like I do? That way I'll be able to keep these shoes. He goes back, and he gets the shoes, and he comes out. He hands them to the boy, the boy tries them on, and what do you know, they're a perfect fit. Vance gives him the shoes, and he takes off for his job interview. It gets Vance thinking, you know, what else can I do with the things that I have, with the time that I have for these young men that are around me? He and his wife talk about it and pray about it for a moment and decide that they're going to order some Bibles and invite some of these young men to come and host a Bible study in their apartment the next week. Sure enough, that first week, uh, seven young men 
show up, and they're led in this Bible study by another young man, this young man who has this brand new pair of shoes that not only wore them to his job interview, but is proudly wearing them in glory to God that day of having this Bible study in their apartment. What can you do with the things that God has given you? Not to hold on to them, not to hope that they don't fit in the lives of others, not to hope that some circumstance occurs so that we can keep things, but truly hoping and truly praying that God will open up our eyes to the opportunities that we have to seek first his kingdom, to be able to work with him as he allows us in building this great community and the life that is yet to come. Because on the final day, when you and I see Jesus face to face, I can't wait to be able to stand before him and hear about those opportunities, not only for myself, but for others. And I don't want to be the person that stands there and says over and over again an excuse, well, I didn't do this, Lord, because uh, I really needed those shoes for myself uh, for church the next week. Lord, I, I didn't do that with my time because I was so busy that week. Lord, Lord, I was just hoping that somebody else would take some responsibility. I was already doing so much in the community where I was at. Instead, I want to hear our Lord say those other words that may surprise us so much. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Think about that in, in this time that we have, in our generosity, uh, the time that you donated food uh, to the food bank, that you were donating to God, that time that you sat down and wrote a letter to a, a neighbor, just saying you're thinking about them and hoping that you're doing well, time that, that you spent really thinking about how our God is caring for that individual. Uh, the time that you decided that you were going to be able to give that financial gift to a mission organization that you were donating not only to others here on this earth, but you were donating ultimately to the mission of God. What are the ways that we can be generous? We push aside those material things. We have this attitude of generosity, and it opens up the door for that third point. When we get there, I will focus on what matters. I'm really going to now focus on what truly matters. There was a small church in a rural farming community that was doing their stewardship campaign. And because of the size of their congregation and the importance of this campaign, the pastor decided he was going to canvas all the members in the area and visit them one by one to be able to share about this stewardship campaign and how they could contribute. He came finally to one home of a farmer named Farmer Brown, and when he came to Farmer Brown's house, he knew that he was known for being frugal. Uh, let's be honest, he was known for being cheap. But when he got to the house, he decided he was going to take a, a very special tact, if you will, of being able to talk to him about the stewardship campaign. So he sat down with Farmer Brown, and he said to him, you know, uh, Mr. Brown, if you had two tractors someday, do you think you could allow the church maybe once in a while to be able to to use them on our property when a, when a tree falls down or when we need to be able to do some work there. And Farmer Brown said, yeah, yeah, sure, that's, that's no problem. And the pastor said, well, Farmer Brown, you know, if you had uh, the opportunity and won the lottery, I'm talking millions of dollars, someday you won those millions of dollars, do you think you would contribute uh, 10% to the church? And he said, yeah, yeah, someday if I won the lottery, I would, I would definitely do that. And he said, well, Farmer Brown, you know, someday if you had two pigs, and he said, whoa, 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 hold on there a second, Pastor. You already know that I have two pigs. And you see the tack that was taken there. We think about all these things of, of someday. Someday if I, if I did this I will do that someday if I had that. Then I will, I will use these things. Then I will focus on being generous. Then I will be able to put first the kingdom of God and that which matters most. But the problem is, someday never comes. It's always the next day or the next week or the, the next month. What if we focus on what matters right now? Pastor Mark talked about that last week 
in his sermon. If you haven't heard it, go back and, and check it out again. The concept of what matters right now, in this moment. What can we do about not worrying so much about our current circumstances and being able to, to covet the things around us? What can we do to be generous in our circumstances, of not focusing on the material, of knowing that which really matters? Because I would challenge uh, all of you who are out there, and myself included, you probably have more time now for most of us than you ever had. What are you doing with that time? Are you honoring God? Uh, are, you, are you in uh, devotion or, or Bible study? Are you in prayer? Are you taking that time to be able to spend with uh, your, your son or your daughter, your, your grandfather or your grandmother, uh, your spouse, and being able to grow and strengthen those relationships? Put work aside maybe for a moment. Maybe it's been put aside for you. And focus on that which matters now in this moment. Maybe for some of you that have talents, instead of just saying, well, well, someday I will use these talents, let's use them now. Think about the people in our service today or the last couple weeks that, that sang a song, the great volunteers that we had, or that were able to lead the Lord's prayer for us, that took the time and the talents that they had and they put those into action. Maybe you can do that for your neighbors. Maybe you have some social distancing weed pulling that can occur for the lady down the street that can't get out there and do it herself right now. What is the way that you can offer those talents that you have? And finally, our, our treasure. What is that treasure that you have? Some of us here today have been blessed financially. Uh, is it time for us to be able to think about the gifts that we have been given and that which we are giving back to God? I would challenge you to be able to make it a gift, and not, not tomorrow, not, not in a week from now, but today, to be able to support the mission and ministry of God's kingdom, of his church. And whether you have that time or those talents or that treasure, don't wait. What are we going to do today to focus on that which truly matters the most? And for all of us, finally, we have that, that testimony that testimony to be able to, to give to others. Because in this time of being able to share these gifts, we have a story to be able to share. And you may look at me today and say, well, Pastor, you know I have time now. You know we have treasures. Uh, you know we have testimony. And so you know what? Uh, it's time to be able to share some of that bacon. Let's get out there and be able to share the things that we currently have. Not someday, but right now. Be creative with it. Because when we do that, Christ and his mission become so much more important. It is truly that which matters. Paul puts it this way, But whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the suppressing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish, that I may gain Christ. Rubbish, uh, trash, complete waste, that which is, which is thrown away, all of those material things around us, because he has experienced Christ. When we start to put aside those elements, those things that we thought mattered, we truly, at the end of the day, begin to see who matters that Jesus is most important in our life, that Christ and his mission in seeking those kingdom elements first is that which builds the life that is yet to come. Now, don't get me wrong. Uh, it is important for us, especially as Christians, to be fiscally responsible, to, to manage our time, to manage our talents appropriately, to be able to prepare for life before death. But do not mistake what is most important, the life that occurs after death, that which Christ has won on our behalf. As you review those items in your bucket list today, maybe think about the bucket list that Christ writes before the time that he commits to going to heaven on our behalf. Well, he takes time to be able to be with the poor and is on his bucket list and provide for him. Check. He takes time to be able to heal the sick, the deaf, the blind, the lame.
check. He calls out for his disciples and for himself to be able to serve the orphans and the widows. And they do so. Check. And finally, Jesus goes to the cross on our behalf to die so that you can live. Check. A life of stewardship changes us because it shifts the priorities of that which is most important. That we are only managers of what God has entrusted to us. The concept of stewardship isn't taking a tip and placing it on the tablecloth of God. It's a response that we have due to a debt that was paid on our behalf on that cross. When we see that and when we remember that, everything begins to fade. We become more generous and we focus on that which matters. How are you going to allow the Holy Spirit to work these great gifts in you today so that we can continue in this mission of building the kingdom of God? With that, God's blessings to you today. May this word be upon your heart, upon your mind, upon your soul, as you remember that you are a child who is redeemed by God. Amen. service today. Uh, please come back and uh, sign on with us next week as we continue with our series, One Month to Live. With that, just two brief announcements uh, for us to be able to bring up and remind you of. Uh, as Pastor Mark mentioned, we are going to be starting a new Bible study on the book of Acts next week, so please join us for that. Uh, number two, we are doing some online kids' time programs, so sign on to 
our church website or click on our YouTube channel to make sure your kids are able to get some teaching, uh, care and plans, some crafts for them to be able to do at home. And so please make sure you're integrating this time of Christ with your students, with your kids in the household. And finally, uh, enjoy and receive the benediction of our Lord. May our Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May our Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen.